Yeah, that, that's true. So review, brief review. So a continue loop, a continue statement will basically, wherever you are in a loop, it will jump to the next iteration in a while loop. So I don't know, do I have the uh, student resources continue and breaks? Oh, no. Dang it. Continue, break, edit with idle. Here we go. So here we go. Here is a continue statement. This means that when I hit that, when I run this, who am I? Thank you, Josh. You didn't know that. So who am I? So it's going to, if my name doesn't equal Joe, it's going to continue and it shoots oh, me back up yeah. here. And then it just loops through this little bit here. And then once I say Joe, it goes, hello, Joe, what's the password? It's a fish. Now, if I type in the correct password break, swordfish, it breaks out of the loop and then boom, we're here. If I type in the wrong password, it then starts all the way over. And then when I type anything but capital J Joe, so yeah if you if you put break here if it, out. it just jump it would jump down here so if you don't so this is really important I was talking with my fiance about this class um, and how writing poor code allows vulnerabilities vulnerabilities allow hackers so if you done if you had done what you did and you're like oh it's not a big deal, it is because if I can if I can get access to your code and read it I can break it. So you want to code in such a way that no matter what people do, you can't get around it. So we're gonna learn that with try and accept errors today. Try and accept, um, and that's basically do this. If you get an error, do this. You know when you break something, you get a value error or a key error, that red text that flares up. You can code around that. So it's pretty cool. Um, any questions on break and continue? The, oh, um, Nick. I want to just, can you just try to make it uh, x variable and equal plus one before the continue statement so you can see if it's, it's restarting the loop or just x to the next. Oh, x, yeah. And then print ask at the very end. At the very end, okay. So this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now. So he was verifying does it start the loop over or like what what does it do does it just so it actually does loop it makes a mini loop here and every time it gets to here it adds one so it do, you can keep track that way and you can put if name doesn't equal joe and ask is less than 10 do this if it's greater than 10 break so like exactly you can write it in in that way by using this continue and stuff Oh, I hate that on my phone. <laughs> you could do that, right? You could like, that'd be hard. Like, yeah. Give them like a two-minute countdown, and then like. Um, you guys know. Times. Time dot. Time two minutes, and then. Importing modules. So this is one thing that I forgot to tell you guys in intro. When I am importing something, you know how we did in our game import, or from Pi game. <laughs> Import star, pygame.locals import star. Yeah, you did. Um, uh, I don't remember that, Mr. Stolter. That was over a year ago. I know it was. Old Pi game, winning and losing. Right here. So from pygame.locals import star. What that does is if I. It basically you don't have to you don't have to type pygame dot something. What does that mean? Well, if I import, oh yeah, I remember this. Like import as 
like import random as r. Yeah, so if I do import random, I have to go random dot oh, yeah, yeah. random so dot int. No, random, random. dot random. rand int zero. zero to ten. That's gonna give me a random number. I can go import random as r and I can go r dot rand int zero ten. Still works, and I can go uh, is from import, is that what it is, or import from random? Import. Hang on. From, in, okay. From random import star, and now I can just do rand int 0, 10. So you get, it gets rid of having to type that random dot or that r dot. So when we were using Pygame, we did this so that we didn't have pi game dot key down, pi game dot key up, pi game dot this, pi game dot that. We could just type key up, key down, that sort of thing. Um, does that make sense? Yes, Robert. If you import like math, can you also import math as like the star? And then just. So you want from math import this? Yeah, would it work the same way? Uh, have one thing floor. I don't. Oh, oh, in conjunction. Yeah. No, it works. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I math dot floor rounds down. Math dot ceiling rounds up. Okay. Okay. Apparently not. I can't remember. There's something like that where you can have it round up or round down. Um. So yeah, that's actually a really good question. Can you have multiple? imported star in from module import star yeah. and uh, you can't um, but that's a really cool thing to have so you're not always typing random dot rand enter or this or random dot choice you can just do choice I like personally I might do from or import random as R that way I know R dot random that's a module that I'm using whereas if I just have random equals like I might mix up variables so personally, I would probably do r dot rand int as opposed to just rand int, just for me. But you guys, it's your code. It's how you guys want to do it. Um, ceiling's not defined. Yeah, I can't remember. Um, last thing, ending a program early with sys dot exit. Oh, maybe that's why it didn't work. Um, continue break statements. Oh, so is that like control C or just not? Uh yeah, so student resources sys dot exit. I think I copied typed the code wrong. So this is in the book. This is on page fifty eight. So when I run this, this is a never ending loop, right? I don't have a way to get out of this. Sys dot exit is similar to break. Um, so when I run this. Right, no matter what. So I'm going to type exit and it breaks out. Exit is a code. It's a pre it's one of those purple words, so it's it's a function attached to it. This is just a way to get out of an entire code. Uh just to end the function. Or I'm sorry, not to end the function. sys.exit so Look at this. Every time I typed, it says type exit to exit. That's this print statement, right? And then I type in my answer, afzida, very cool word, means awesome in awesome. And then I get, uh, then it says, so you type exit exit, fudasa, you typed fudasa, right? So it tells me what I typed, but when I type exit, it just, it jumps out. So if we do print question marks and we type oops. It, it if I had break here if I had put break here we would see these question marks, wouldn't we? But by having exit, it just stops the program there. So if you do want to have, hey, you type something in wrong and, and we want to end the program, you know, you could do print, oops. 
you have elected to choose to end the program. Says exit. So now when I type exit, you have elected to end the program, and then it doesn't even get down here. Oop, doesn't get to this at all. Yes, Robert. So sys exit exits it ends the entire program, whereas break only ends the loop. Yep. Yeah, so if I typed here, let's just change this to break real quick. Oops. Yeah. Makes sense? Okay. Um save that. Now this next thing, I don't I can't remember when we get out of here, so Where is I'm teaching sys dot exit. Okay, so just so you guys know, again, this is pretty easy stuff, I think, because you guys have all done this before. Practice questions, like I'm gonna put this up on, on campus, but if you want to put it down in your book, are the following. Uh one, two, four, five. Stop looking at my code, dude. <laughs> it's my code, Adam, that I copied from the book. No, I just like the fact that it's like I told you to enter a number. Got it. Yeah. So 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, 12, 10, 11, 12, 13. So for chapter 2, and again, I'm going to put this online for you. So if you don't write it down, that's fine. But 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, 11, 12, 13. 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, it's going to be on page 59, practice questions for chapter 2. So, are we going to need our book or are you going to have the questions up? You're going to need your book. Well, it's online. It's also online, yeah, yeah so you can just go to the end of chapter. Oh, I missed two resources. What's your title is? I don't know, chapter 2 review. Are we going to start on that now? No. That's just, no. We we need to get through, the next week is just going to be in class time reviewing everything, working on stuff at home until the test next Friday. Um, all right, so you guys are pretty... What? <laughs> what? You said you were paying attention, so I was joking, like I'm not paying attention to you. Um, okay, so I know you guys are pretty good with uh, functions. Um, do you guys have any questions on return values and return uh, fun or value returning functions versus void functions? I can't remember if I went over that with like Paul's group. Paul's class. Oh, I don't remember that. You don't remember that at all? You could have brought it up, but I just don't remember. Okay, so what a. Okay, uh, I'm gonna. Can I get a new. So this define fun one. Uh, X is 19, return 19. Uh, and we're going to go y is fun one print y and we're going to copy this okay so this first one here this is a value returning function And an easy way to remember to know if something's a value returning function is, does it have the word return in the function? If it doesn't, it is a null, or, or I'm sorry, it's a void function. Void function means it just does something and then displays information. A value returning function means you can do this. I can have a variable set to the result of that function. So let me run this and I'll show it to you and I'll show you. Yeah, I can't remember. The curriculum's changed a little bit, so this is advanced Python. I remember I didn't understand at all. But I didn't understand most things. Didn't I change the variable and send it back or something? So return basically says this function one 
is equivalent to this. Oh, this should be x. That's that's what a value returning function is. So is that to just oh, so it will just print nineteen. Yeah, it'll print nineteen. Whereas this this is a void function. It does something and can display information, but it doesn't have a value to the function. So what would that print? This? Yeah. This prints none. Oh. Okay. Because this doesn't this function does not have a return value. Okay. When I first when I first learned programming, I didn't get this. I was like, well, that's stupid, just print it. No. It, you could print it and get the same output. I can do this. Uh, yeah, why don't you just do print that? Because what if I have what if I have a tax uh, tax program that's calculating taxes and it does a bunch of complex math and then I want that number to then be used somewhere else. Oh, so you could do return a variable. Yeah, that's what that the, hasn't been defined in your function. Yeah. So, so instead of doing x equals nineteen, you could do like x equals complicated math problem. Taxes is so. Let's do salary. Give me a salary number. Five billion. Five K. Five, oh my God, you guys are seventy-five thousand. Taxes is point. Let's say point. What? Are, okay. Oh, so no. Let's do seven hundred fifty thousand, and then we you get taxed at ninety-five six eight percent. Oh my God. Oh my God. So, uh. We'll just do income because I can't remember what the difference between gross is. Is 75000 times 0.9568. Actually, I should just do salary times taxes. Uh, but I want the income after taxes. So then I'm going to do salary minus. I'm going to return. So this is taxes whatever income income and then I want to print this so even though I make seven hundred fifty thousand dollars taxed at nearly ninety seven percent um, I only get thirty two thousand four hundred dollars California <laughs> yes um, but you guys, so I can have a function that does all this complex math, and if all I want is like the taxes after it, I can return my, or the income. Then I can use, you know, let me actually do this. Um, y is fun one, so then we're going to go define fun two y. So you can ignore this none, the N-O-N-E, not like an actual physical none. Um, <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I knew, I knew someone was I thinking why, it. I um, so then I can have, then I can have another function that takes this and I can use this in multiple places. So I can have, normally, some of you guys are probably thinking, well, why don't I just pass income directly to this function? You could do that, but if I needed, let's say I'm an accountant and I need to know a lot of information and I'm going to use that Y a lot of times. Um, fun two, fun three, fun four, fun five. And so now I just need So let's say this one's calculating property tax, property tax, this is income tax, this is a proposed wealth tax, and this is a death tax. Death tax? Wait, there's a death tax? tax. Like, if, like if, I make a, if I make a $10 million and after taxes, I have $10 million in my bank account that's essentially cash and I can spend it. Like it, Taxes have been paid and I die and I want to give it to my kids. In some places, I think 
there's a tax on that money to give it to my kids, even though I've already paid taxes on it. Is the government? Uh, we're not going to get into politics here because this is a programming class. But people like money. I miss debate clubs. So. Well, we got to start that again. So, but guys, do you guys see that how returning income and I, I'm setting Y equal to that? I can then use Y in as many different functions as I need to, as opposed to having. Okay, well now I got to go fun two Y, fun three Y. Fun four Y, fun five Y. And then what if I change something and then I have to make sure that I come back and do this. I have to change it all here. So it's just a little more, the, the less things you have to type, the fewer errors you'll make, right? So that's a really good, um, so value returning functions are really good. So that's what that is. Um, so we're gonna then move on to the none value. Essentially none value, N-O-N-E, is that's a value, but there's nothing there. It's kind of like the limit does not exist. Is there a limit? Yes, but it doesn't exist. Is there something there? Yes, but there's nothing there. What? So in the book they have this, um, what is it? X equals print, hello, right? So it prints hello. But then if I go X, there's nothing there. If I print X, it just says none. Why? Because this is a none type value. Because it's not a value of anything. It's, it's, a it's like a function. It's a command. So is it something? Yes. Can we do anything with it? No. Well, how, why did it just print hello without even pressing X? Because I, it... That's how it works. That's about all I that's because print because if you have print it prints. X equals print, so it prints that, but it's kind of like a one time use thing, I guess. Why, though, did you put none somewhere? No, that's just what happens. Oh, so if I tried that on my computer, it wouldn't work. You would get this. Actually actually how you can expand this is you create the variable called X and you give it data space, but it didn't take any data space with the print hello. So when you call it up, there's nothing in that data space. So it will be not. This is how you define it, Java. Oh, okay. Makes sense. Does everyone get that? Why don't you explain it again, Nick? Wait, wait, wait. How does this work like with the um the, the whatever module or whatever the other one is called? Like when you have the split screen with one side and then you have to run it and it runs to the shell instead of just typing it. Well, out. that's because this is uh, X equal to a print. Okay. But if you did that in the, the not in the shell. In the console. Yeah, in the console. Yeah. It would. It would still be, it would still wouldn't work. Could you like change something about the. Would no, I, I'll figure it out, Mr. Stoltz. No, so if I have X's print hello, right? Is that what it is? Yeah. Hello, it does the command, right? It has, he's, so as Nick's saying, print hello is not a value, it's a command, command, and a variable can only be equated to a value. Okay, so let's break it down. So in the book, so if we have, all right, so y is function one, and function one, define function one, x is 19, return 19, return x, right? Okay. So you guys yeah. checking with me. So now y equals x. Yep. Because this function is a return value function. Track with me? Yep. So print, when this is purple and that's purple, like these are both functions. Print is a function. Print x, it will print whatever x is. This function has a default return none. It's probably the best way to put it. By default, print returns nothing. It's just so print, yeah, print isn't equal to anything. 
Yeah, it just, it's, boom, it's a thing. It's a function that doesn't, it's a void function. Yes, because it has no value. Correct. So that's why when we do x is print 19, oh, and then we print I get it now. x is because in here there is a return none. Okay. So it executes this command, and then x gets set equal to none by default. All right, I get it. Tracking with me? Okay. Again, how important is that in the overall scheme of coding? Debatable. But at least you guys know that in intro, a couple of you guys I've told, never make x equal to print. I said that many times. Never do it. Because you think, oh, it'll print it, but then later, no, it doesn't. So. <laughs> keyword arguments. You guys remember keyword arguments in print? So, ow. So, if I have print, I'm just going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Right? That just, it prints it as is. Yeah. No, I don't. But if I go comma sep, which stands for separator, wherever this comma is in the print, it equates that to whatever's here. So if I want to print each one of these on a new line, I can just do backslash n. Oh yeah. I don't and then everything gets printed on one line. If I want these to not have any space, I can just put nothing in there and they all get printed as one big number. I can put a tab. So if I want to oh, if I want it to make it look pretty, I can do tabs. I can do Oh, so one bottle of pop do you guys see now how do I get it to be right here at the very end I can do another comma end and I can end this with whatever I want this is the end of the song. So now the last item in that list will following the last item in the list will be whatever string is in the end. Yes? How do you uh, loop through something again? Or like numbers, like don't you just like add one at the end and then it's just like Yeah, you can so do that. So you I wanna go like one, two, three, four, like bottles and like go find the wall that makes sense. Like just like goes through all of it. That makes sense. Well, X, X. Oh yeah, and then you just add one. You could do. And then we'll do X plus one. And then you could do like zero to hundred and then do it a hundred times. Mm -hmm. You can also do that in one of your homework assignments is to write a loop with a write one to 10 with a for loop and have it print the same thing with a while loop. You have to use both. Um, do you guys have any questions on that? That's really useful. So what I would start doing is in all of your, every time you print something, if you're printing more than one thing, throw a separator in there and throw an end thing in there. And just to get used to it because it is super helpful if you wanna display multiple things of information and you want it to look neat and follow a certain pattern or whatever. So it, some of you guys might remember, you know, print name backslash t backslash t age backslash t backslash t and doing it that way. You could in theory just do name comma age comp age um weight, I don't know. Uh, height, thank you. Height and then sep is backslash t backslash t. Why are you taking offense? <laughs>
I should also be name shaming you, age shaming you, and height shaming you if you're gonna do that. Okay. Anyway, but so instead of having to do backslash C backslash T, I can just write this all out at once, throw one backslash T, and then I'm done. Because fewer things you type, the less mistakes you the less you type, the fewer mistakes you make. Local and global scope. Do you guys remember local and global variables? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember the words, but I don't remember what they mean. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm just going to write this on the board because I think it's a little easier. I remember that. Can't local only be used within the function where global can be used anywhere throughout the code? Exactly. So, if I have defined function x is 10, y is 15, and so this is my code, so I have it over here. And then down here, I want to print x, comma, y. It's going to say that these aren't defined because they are only local. So these variables x and y can only be used within function 1. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. If I have print a comma b and I have a is 5 and b is 0, will those work? Yes, because these are considered global because they are essentially, if they're on the first line, or if there's no indent, they're accessible by anything in the program, yeah. any line. Whereas these ones are local, and these can only be accessed by the function above it. Now what if in a function, what if I don't necessarily want to return one value, but I want multiple values to be accessible by other functions, what do I do, Robert? Oh, uh, you have to make it global using the global Yes. Command. Yes. So let's say I want, and z is equal to 100. So what I do is I type global space z. And now I can print z down here. Do you guys have questions? I have a question, but it's not, not with the global variable. It's 1027. How do you? It's 1027. Oh. oh, shoot, four minutes. I didn't even get to try and accept it. Crap. OK. Uh, yes, Josh. So say I'm printing, I have a loop, and it's spitting out something like that. Yeah. How do I spit it out like that? Like you do you do n equals um, nothing or a space. So if you want it to be a space, throw a I space. I don't want in there to be a space. I want it, but it's like right. No. So you don't want one, two, no, three. Yeah, I want one, you two. want? Do you want one, two, three, yeah. or do you want one, two, three? With the this, last one's good. This one? Sure. Then do n equals and make this a space. I mean, all right, Nick, I'll have to, I only have three minutes. You know what? We're not going to get to try and accept, so. Just a quick question. What's your question? So, uh, it's, I don't know if you, uh, in Python you can public void a variable without giving initial value. I don't know. So you're going to say why? Can, can, can you try just to write void x and see if it gives you an L? Not, not right now. I'll do it okay. on my spare. I'll do it later. Okay. Or you can do it in your spare time and let us know. Um, because I want to explain something real quick. So with try and accept, the global statement, we just went over that. Okay, so this is called exception handling. What I want you guys to do, because I didn't get to it, um, uh, read 72 and 73 and mess with the... Um, mess with try and accept and I will review it on Monday. I do want you guys to tr attempt the at the back of on page 77 in the practice projects. I want you to work on the collapse sequence and the input validation. So these are two practice problems, two practice projects um, that I want you guys to work on and have done for Monday. If you have any questions, I, I want you to do it as best as you can. This is investigative learning. Um, I will go over everything on Monday and how to use it. Yes, Josh. So we got to read 
do that and do the other assignment? You have to do the practice problems. Practice problems shouldn't take that long. There's only like 10 of them. And those ones, put them in like a Word document or a Python script and upload that. Don't handwrite them because I, I don't want to deal with that. Um, I want you to read 77 and 78. And I want you to do the, the two practice projects in the back of the book. So you have the Colat sequence, which if you're a math guy, you should probably know, but they do a nice job of explaining it. And then input validation is you add to your previous code in the Colat sequence to make sure that whatever person types in, you can handle if they type in a number or a word using try and accept. So in order to do the second part of the project, you have to read 77 and 78. Essentially, what this is, what a try and accept is, because I have literally a minute, is that I want you to try this section of code. If in this section of code, hang on guys, hang on. If in this section of code you get an error, do this. So if, you, if we get an exception error, in this line of code, do this. That's what try and accept is. Try this, in the exception of an error, do this instead. So work on that, um, and we'll cover that on Monday. If you have questions, don't hesitate to let me know. Um, those of you watching on the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> Finally, did it. Finally, only took me two years.